in a Shakespeare play or a Spielberg film, Mark Rylance is one of our most compelling actors. He's also an activist who's not afraid to step up for causes he is passionate about in order to raise funds for Stop the War. Sir Mark told me recently why he's taking the stage soon to perform the Nobel Prize lecture that the late Harold Pinter gave back in 2005. Pinter famously used his speech to rail against American and British foreign policy and criticise the invasions of Iraq and Afghanistan. You have to hand it to America. It has exercised a quite clinical manipulation of power worldwide while masquerading as a force for universal good. He's in a wheelchair with a blanket over his lap, so you can see, you can sense how angry it is because he's speaking it. Um, yes, I'd say it is angry. I, I think from, from people I know who worked with him, he, 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 it became increasingly hard for him not to want to express his own um, subjective feelings about uh, injustice. We've had the Iraq war, which he was very, very angry and engaged about. Of course, the anti-Iraq war, Stop the War March, was the biggest single demonstration, I think, in British, certainly in modern British history. Yeah. Vast, vast demonstration. At the time, it didn't change anyone's mind inside government. Particularly, no. but it did create a lot of our politics today. I mean, the Jeremy Corbyn movement came out of Stop the War, and some of the money for the, from this lecture um, is going to stop the war. I've have been a supporter of Stop the War since those marches, and and they they were it was one of the most powerful events of my life mar on that march. I've been on lots of marches in my time, right back to the anti-apartheid marches and things that Jeremy was also involved in. Um, it was for, so funny in those times because afterwards we'd say, who, who came? You know, did anyone come from the government? Was anyone paying attention? And they'd say, oh, you know, so-and-so was there, Bruce Kent and people were there, Jeremy Corbyn was there. Oh, yeah, he was, he's always there. We, so we, we, he was always there. He's the MP for Islington North, Jeremy Corbyn. Now it's incredible that his consciousness is give, being given such a platform. But yes, it was a, a, it, it was a phenomenal march, and then it was a phenomenally depressing uh, aftermath when, when Tony Blair and the, the government didn't change course. I can vividly remember interviewing Harold Pinter at the time that he gave this speech for the first time, this lecture for the first time, and being impressed by the fieriness and the anger and the passion. You used um, your famous Nobel acceptance speech to, to have a real go at Bush and American policy. It was said at the time it was a slightly one-sided fight, perhaps, yourself against uh, America, but uh, nevertheless, has that um, prize given you a platform you might not otherwise have had, do you think? It, it turned out to be a, a worldwide platform because I did it on television. I did mm. my speech on television. I wasn't well enough to go to Stockholm. Indeed. And I hope the speech reflected uh, the reality. An impossible question, perhaps, but if he was with us now, what do you think his main political concerns would be? They would be to do with injustice. They would be to do with the fact that now 90% of casualties in war around the world are civilian. Civilian. When we go to war, we don't kill other people who are on a battlefield like in Napoleon's day or who have signed up or whatever. We, we kill civilians uh, to resolve conflict. The injustice of it is intolerable in the anti-Semitism row that has riven the Labour Party. Um, do you think that Harold Pinter would be happy with Jeremy Corbyn's leadership of the Labour Party, given that he was a proudly Jewish man himself? Yes, I know many Jewish people who are very happy with Corbyn's leadership, and I obviously I hear about other Jewish, Jewish people who are not. I would suspect that he would have met with Jeremy, as I have met with Jeremy, a, and seen that, this, that you get a very different impression of this from the media than is happening in the Labour, than when you talk with John McDonnell or Jeremy Corbyn, who, t to my mind, are the furthest away from people who, who would be involved in any anti-Semitic type thinking. They, they fought all their lives for the justice uh, of all people and against fascism and against tyranny. Now, two things have happened since the last time we talked. Uh, one, you've been showered with yet more honours, you've been knighted and so forth. Um, and secondly, you are now in this very, very dangerous position of being a national treasure. Uh, so much of a national treasure, you're lampooned on television. Wolf Hall, it is an honour to have you in my play. Yes, it is. Oh, <laughs> although, of course, it, it isn't your play. Not my play? You didn't write it. 
Nor indeed any of your plays. What? It was another scribe, I'm certain. A posh boy, no doubt. Is this dangerous for an actor to be this big, to be this well-known? It's a very good question. I don't know the answer to it. I, I think, I mean, I think when I come and do an interview like this with you and people I hear me speaking my own, uh, you know, thoughts and feelings, does that limit my ability to play other people? I, I, it's a difficult question. It's a difficult question whether to speak out. I expect people have it in all areas of work, mm. you know, with the, the, the difficulty of being a whistleblower. In, in some area of work where things are not going the way, will you lose your job? Will, will you lose your, um, will people become, have an opinion of you? Uh, I, I, I don't know, I don't know. So Mark Rylance, I strongly suspect you're not going to lose your job. Thank you very much indeed for talking to <laughs> I us. I hope not. <laughs> and Mark Rylance is performing Harold Pinter's Nobel Prize speech on two separate evenings at London's Harold Pinter Theatre next month. It's part of a season of Pinter plays there to mark the 10th anniversary of the playwright's death.